This is the day in the life of Chad Sugden. You're always going to get the rough or the smooth sort of thing and get stitched up in situations. So I was used to that. Like, I'm taking a loss. Like, I think everyone's obsessed with these padded records being unbeaten and that. For me, it doesn't matter. It's about what you do when you get beat and how you overcome that. Do you know what I mean? I've seen lads undefeated, but they haven't fought half the opponents that I've fought. Now we're getting closer to the fight. It's more sprint based, um, higher intensity. Yeah, so we start off with some cardio and then. This afternoon, rest, recover, eat, then this afternoon we'll come back in at three. Pads, technical work, a uh, bit of bag work, defence work, uh, conditioning. After that, finish, rest up for half an hour, and then we've got the uh, kids coming for the kids' class who I train on a Wednesday. Indeed, it's quite a busy class. Some Wednesdays I'll go to like Birmingham as well, where I train with John Costello and Talab Hussein. They're the other two people that help me with my technical side of things and um, it's good to get out of the comfort zone and it helps me then. Um, I think it takes me away from like being in the same place all the time. It's nice to get out, like when we go sparring to the gyms, it's good to get that buzz because that's what you feel on fight night. So it's good to get away from the comfort zone and do that, do that road work because you know that when you get in there, you're going to be used to that feeling. It's, getting, it's making the uncomfortable, feel comfortable sort of thing. It gives us that accountability for yourself, so if you train and you feel horrible then you know you haven't been disciplined with yourself outside of the gym, do you know what I mean? So if you can then train, if you, if you can then train and feel good then you know you put the work in at home as well as in the gym. So I think that's that's what people forget as well. The, the most important thing is like what you do outside the gym as well as in the gym, do you know what I mean? So when you work here, you work, but everything else is preparing for, for them sessions, do you know what I mean? And what you do, you need to get your rest in, and the right foods, and, and obviously hydration is key. And it's not putting other stuff obviously into your body that's gonna detriment that in any way. Yeah, so uh, at, when I was um, 19, I won the Intercontinental title against the Romanian. Uh, that was down in Luton, actually. He had over 40 fights, I'd only had about 10 at the time as a pro kickboxer, but I had a decorated amateur career with about 100. I had 100 wins and five losses as an amateur. So coming into the pro ranks, I sort of acceler accelerated into it. And then when I was uh, also, when I won the world title, and that was, in my hometown in Newark, I've beaten an Italian who had uh, 36 wins, 26 knockouts or something like that. Paolo Fiorio his name was. And uh, it was actually a last minute change of opponent about three weeks before. I was supposed to be fighting a, a Brazilian guy, but this guy come in and uh, yeah, we won over five rounds and became the youngest ever ISK world champion. Um, to be honest, I'm just, I, I want to go all the way, I want to go be a world champion. Um, I also want to um, yeah, make, make a career out of the sport and become comfortable, do you know what I mean? Like everyone does, it's a sport, it's a talent that I've got which I can hopefully um, retire early and like dedicate my time to like putting back into other boxes and young, young talents coming through. Because um, in the long run that's what I want to do. I, I want to like set up like a scholarship sort of thing for young lads that don't quite make it to the Olympics or do you know what I mean? You've got them guys that get beat by one point by the guys that go to the Olympics. Um, where do they go? Do they just stop then or they've also got a potential to become a pro and maybe even a better pro because that's it the hard way. Um, a bit like myself, I think if you can, someone can then help scout them young talented boxers that just miss out. Um, because of either a bad day or they just lose on that on that particular day, then I believe they can 
one day be world champions in their own right and uh, become even better pros because I believe the, the, the coaches that I'll have involved will be better at, better at turning them into profession, seasoned professionals than maybe some of the amateur coaches. What will win you an Olympic gold medal, which is a great achievement, won't win you a professional world title because it's a totally different sport. It's not over three, four rounds, it's over 12 rounds. And uh, you've obviously got a lot more time to, to impact on that person's body and wear them down sort of thing. So it's a, it is a totally different, yeah, it's a totally different kettle of fish, I suppose. Um, mix up, but I try and keep it, keep it in. Cause we yeah, at the minute I have it short, do you know, like for fights and that, so it, it when it grows out the side, it just looks. Done. I don't like it, so I get him in, and he, he sorts me out a good deal on him as well. He's a uh, yeah, so uh, got, got to keep it fresh, you know what I mean? Especially when like got stuff going on, and that's never know, never know when the cameras are watching or. <laughs> Just uh, get them on the bags, on the pads a little bit. Um, the lad that co the man that come, Joe and two lads are coming earlier. One of their songs. Today it's got to be up there with Canelo or Lomachenko. I believe Lomachenko is going to carry on and be great for another few years, but for Canelo to do what he's done at the different weights and that right now, I'd say probably Canelo is the path plan for what he's achieved and stuff like that. But um, obviously he's got them suspect victories over Golovkin. The first fight, I think Golovkin just stays, but the second fight I thought Canelo won. Um, I do believe people watch fights and listen to the commentary a lot and sometimes that can sway you. Um, but when I watch the fights I like Canelo winning. I'd probably say yeah, Canelo or Lomachenko, they're both two people that I look up to and I do put my that's how I like to like to box and uh, even though they're totally different, I like to bring both of their styles into my game sort of thing. So I've trained Chad since he was about five years of age and obviously I know him probably better than anybody. First and foremost, I'm his dad and it's often difficult when you sort of like become coach and manager. I do believe I've got his best interests at heart and I do believe we're bringing the right people into the team to help support Chad, get to where he wants to be. And if that means bringing other trainers in, if that means bringing other nutritionists in, which we have done, we've got some of the best guys, I believe, um, around us. Scott Robinson looking after the nutrition. We've got John Costello and uh, Talib Hussein now in the team helping Chad train. Uh, and I feel, I feel we've got the right, the right team to take us to the very top. So I believe the relationships are vital because ultimately nobody's going to care for him and look after him more than his dad. And I'm not one of these coaches that thinks he knows it all. You know, I'm learning still. Um, I believe I've got a lot to offer as a coach, but I do believe there's some other great coaches out there, so why not? You know, let's make this a team effort. It's all about getting Chad to the very top. Fantasy match, or that's all that is. Obviously, everyone would. Uh, I think a lot of people would go for the likes of um, Muhammad Ali and Tyson, but I. Uh, I'd like to see uh, a Sugar Ray Leonard fly me over or a Hagra fly me over, just to see, obviously at, at Super Walter, just to see how Floyd would do against them boys because I know I know Floyd's a great and he's one of my idols, but I'd like to see him against them boys in, in the prime and uh, I think to even put him in the same breath as them shows you what sort of levels he's at Floyd, but I think that could be a real test. That's 
for him, man. I think I think it'd be a great fight, one of, one of them fights. Um, uh, yeah, but I'd like to see it. I'd like to see that. Uh, yeah, it's very important. Um, obviously, you see the kids grow and they grow with your training. Them kids are so sort of from young kid. I've been around it. And my experience is very high. I mean, I was um, I was a black belt in kickboxing at, 11, at 10 years of age, which is very young. But from then, obviously, I've been helping and working on the coach side of things. I think when you start coaching people, you learn as you coach, that's when you really start to learn because you, you see people have different ways of doing stuff. And some people's bodies can only move in certain ways and you have to work around that to get them to do a certain technique or win a certain point or compete against a certain level of opponent. And that makes you then look at your own game and think, well, how can I learn off of these kids that are coming through? Because I believe you can learn off anyone. Um, and the coaching, it helps keep the ground as well. And, do you know what I mean? It keeps that discipline in there, which I get from the martial arts side of my background. I believe that I'm still going to the gym with three four. Do you know what I mean? I do, do everything. It's, uh, I'm still learning and still, still grafting. So, not until I, I'm done and hopefully made a lot of money doing what, what I love, and then, then I can take the fourth to pedal a bit. I'd love to get into the pundit side of things because I do think I, I know my boxing and that's one of my things when I'm in the ring I can read fights and stuff like that and I, I believe I'm good at predicting fights when I'm, I know the fighters that come into the ring um, but obviously yeah I will always help in that be helping that sort of gym and like I said before I'd like to start up a sort of scholarship for young boxers that are coming through to help them get to where they want to be and um, not, not just the main ones that make it to the Olympics because they already have their room. Um, the ones that just, like you say, get beat by a point or just miss out. Um, give them an opportunity to make it as a pro because I think they could have as much talent, if not more, um, and grit than the other guys.